the establishment of the Bulgar state. A political void existed in the Balkans during the second half of the 7th century following the successive blows of Avar depredations, Slav settlement, and imperial military, administrative, and economic contraction resulting from the empire's losses to the Arabs in the east. Into that Balkan void rode the Bulgars in the late 670s. The Bulgars were a confederation of steppe nomadic Turkic tribes who formerly were part of successive tribal confederations centered on Ukraine, particularly those headed by the Gok Turks and the Avars. Those associated with the Gok Turks were reduced to Khazar tributaries in the 630s, while the Bulgar tribes previously tied to the Avars broke away after the Khaganate's defeat before Constantinople. One of the latter was the Onager Bulgars, led by Han, ruler, Kubrat, 605-65, who established the mixed ethnic confederation of Great Bulgaria in the northern Caucasus and the southern Ukrainian steppe. In 635 Kubrat drove the Avars from his lands and forged friendly relations with eastern Rome. Another Bulgar rebellion against Avar control was led by the chieftain Kuber, circa 675-circa-88, in the late 670s. He headed a tribe of mixed ethnicity, composed of Avar war prisoners, in Slavonia. Kuber rebelled and led his small force south into the central Balkans, where they settled in northern Macedonia. Although his followers were a mixed bag of Bulgars, Thracians, Illyrians, and possibly Franks, the imperial authorities collectively identified them as Bulgars. Kubrat's Great Bulgaria was shattered by the Khazars in the early 640s, and, on his death, leadership of the Bulgar tribes was divided among his surviving sons. One tribal group moved northeast and settled in the upper Volga Kama River region, becoming the future Volga Bulgar state. Two smaller groups traveled westward to Pannonia and northern Italy, where they fell under the control of the Avars and the East Roman governor of Ravenna, respectively. The main branch of Bulgars, led by Asperu, died 701, pushed southwestward along the Black Sea coast to the Danube Delta in the Balkans' extreme northeast and subdued the Slavs and Avars on the Wallachian plain. Sometime in the late 670s Asperu's Bulgars crossed the Danube into Dobrudza, a region nominally under imperial authority, where they built a fortified encampment and settled. Despite previous good diplomatic relations between the Eastern Empire and Asperu's father Kubrat, Emperor Constantine IV, 668-85, felt ill-disposed to lose even a small portion of his already shrunken imperial territory to the intruders. He attacked the Bulgars with the limited military forces that he could muster, hoping to expel them from their bridgehead south of the Danube, but he was defeated. Unable to keep his military away for long from the more vital Anatolian front against the Arabs, Constantine signed a peace treaty with Asperu in 681. By the agreement's terms, the emperor officially recognized the existence of a Bulgar state in Dobrudza. Asperu was granted control over Moesia between the Danube and the Balkan mountains, and the empire undertook to pay the Bulgar ruler an annual tribute. The treaty was signally significant. Throughout the previous decades of turmoil in the Balkans, the empire never relinquished its claim to nominal control of the entire peninsula. Now, for the first time, the empire surrendered specifically designated regions to outsiders. Asperua's Bulgar state became the first barbarian state to receive official recognition in the Balkans, and in Eastern Europe. Little is known concretely about the early Bulgar state. It seems it was typically Turkic steppe nomadic and ruled by an autocratic Han, a title associated with the sky god Tingri and directly inherited from the Gok Turks. Another Gok Turk association was the ruling clan's name, Dolo, a leading clan among the western Gok Turks. Also typical was the Bulgars' political structure, with authority divided between inner and outer clans and all Bulgars elevated above the non-Bulgar tributary populations, who initially participated in the state only as subjects. In Asperu's state, 
the tributaries mostly were Slavs, most of whom were collectively known as the Seven Tribes, living on the Danubian Plain in Moesia. Further evidence culturally linking the Balkan Bulgar state to Turkic steppe traditions was the layout of the Bulgars' new capital of Pliska, founded just north of the Balkan Mountains shortly after 681. The large area enclosed by ramparts, with the rulers' habitations and assorted utility structures concentrated in the center, resembled more a steppe winter encampment turned into a permanent settlement than it did a typical Roman Balkan city. There is evidence for late Roman-slash-Byzantine cultural influences on the early Bulgar state. Asperu's father Kubrat had been an imperial ally and had received an official court ranking, Patricios. Kubrat may even have been baptized an Orthodox Christian on a visit to Constantinople as a child, although Asperu and his followers were staunchly pagan. Kuber, probably one of Asperu's brothers, unsuccessfully attempted to preserve his ephemeral state in Macedonia by tying himself to imperial clientage. The fact that Asperu received an annual subsidy from the empire confirmed his position as a tributary client of the emperor, in many respects similar to his father's previous situation. Additional evidence for Roman-slash-Byzantine influences in the early Bulgar state were stone commemorative inscriptions carved during the early 8th through 9th centuries. These mostly were written in Greek, using Greek letters rather than Turkish runes. Their content included names of Bulgars bearing Roman-slash-Byzantine titles, Roman-slash-Byzantine terminology, and Roman-slash-Byzantine dating systems. Apparently the Bulgars commonly mimicked some political and administrative imperial models, maintained close direct relations with the imperial court, and, given their own low level of literacy, used some Hellenized subjects as functionaries from an early date. Both the Turkic and the Roman-slash-Byzantine traditions helped shape a viable Bulgar state. The former provided an elite warrior ruling class headed by an autocratic Khan. Their responsibility was to uphold the ruler's undisputed central authority, defend and expand the borders of the state, and ensure that the subject populations remained loyal and productive. In return, the ruler guaranteed their dominant position within the state, their monopoly on all important governing military offices, and their well-being vis-a-vis their peers and others. The latter tradition imparted an imperial ideal to the rulers that was geared toward fashioning a sedentary, sophisticated state, which could take advantage of skills possessed by its non bulgar subjects. Such skills were reflected in record-keeping, court ceremonies and bureaucratic talent. Together, the two traditions forged a bulgar state in the true sense of the word. The borders of Asperua state stretched from the Black Sea in the east to the northern bend of the Balkan Mountains in the west, and from the Carpathian Mountains and Dniester River in the north to the Balkan Mountains in the south, encompassing the regions of southern Bessarabia, Dobrudza, Wallachia, and Moesia. The Bulgars acquired a string of imperial Danube frontier fortresses, including Vidin, Bononia, Nicopol, Nicopolis, and Silistra, Durostalon but they seem to have died out, with their ruins serving as quarries for new Bulgar towns built close by. The important Black Sea port of Varna, Odessos, remained under imperial control. See Map 3 The state's population was divided unevenly between Bulgars and non-Bulgars. The number of Bulgars was low probably no more than 10,000 warriors and their families, generally concentrated on the Danube southern bank and throughout Dobrudza. They conducted a mixed pastoral and agricultural economy and established a lively barter trade with imperial territories to the south. The non-Bulgars constituted the majority population and consisted of sedentary Slavs living in villages and pursuing agriculture, providing infantry forces and paying tribute in kind to their Bulgar overlords. They lived in tribal groups led by native chiefs, who gradually were admitted into the ruling elite's lower ranks. 
some Slav tribes on the state's peripheries were more Bulgar tributaries than outright subjects. Almost nothing is known about the continued existence of Hellenized Thracians and Dacians in the state's territories. Initially the Bulgars maintained their own settlements segregated from the subject Slavs. The inevitable ethnic interbreeding, however, apparently began at an early date. Within a decade of its establishment, the Bulgar state began to play an important role in Byzantine Balkan affairs. Using new theme forces introduced into the Balkans by Emperor Constantine IV, in 688 Constantine's heir Justinian II, 685-95-705-11, set out to punish the Slavs and Kubers Bulgars, in the region around Thessaloniki. Although he succeeded in subduing a number of Slav tribes, he was ambushed by Kuber and lost most of his army, prisoners, and booty. Asperu, at peace with the empire, did not intervene in the campaign. Soon thereafter Justinian II was deposed and banished. After a decade in exile, in 705 Justinian enlisted the military aid of Bulgar Han Tervil, 701-18, whom he considered a client, and won back his throne in Constantinople. In a display of official gratitude, Justinian brought Tervil to the imperial palace, where he was invested with both a court robe and a high ceremonial imperial rank, enthroned next to Justinian, and received the obeisance of the imperial court hierarchy. Tervil's treatment by Justinian was more display than true sentiment. Justinian quickly tired of paying the annual tribute to the Bulgars stipulated in the 681 treaty and prepared for war. Forewarned of the emperor's hostile intentions, Tervil unleashed a surprise attack on the empire and thwarted Justinian's plans. When Justinian was overthrown for a second time in 711, Tervil used the occasion as grounds for ravaging the empire's Thracian territories until a treaty was signed with Emperor Theodosios III, 715 to 17 in 716 the commercial terms in that document spoke for a sophisticated and effective administration in the bulgar state that could control and regulate commerce by treaty arrangement the bulgars opened a marker in constantinople both parties needed peace to jointly face the impending threat of an arab invasion in 717 that invasion materialized and the Arabs laid siege to Constantinople. The Bulgar Slav troops sent by Tervil proved instrumental in forcing the Arabs' withdrawal. In terms of saving medieval Europe from Islamic conquest, many historians consider the Arabs' defeat by the Byzantines and Bulgars before Constantinople an achievement equal to, or greater than that of Charles Martel in defeating the Moors in France at the Battle of Tours, 731-32. Affairs in the Bulgar state are sketchy for the half-century period following Tervil's reign. With the death of Han Savar, 725-39, the House of Dullo ended and a civil war erupted between two factions of Bulgar warrior aristocrats, Bulyars. One side held a pro-Byzantine stance, advocated peace with the empire, and may have been allied with Slav tribal leaders. The other side was anti-Byzantine sought war with the empire, and may have been committed to preserving exclusive Bulgar elite status within the state. It appears that the peace party dominated until 755 and the war party thereafter. The Byzantine authorities apparently knew little about the workings of Bulgar society and generally treated the Bulgars with contempt, hostility, and fear. Expediency alone had led them to recognize the Bulgar state on what they still considered imperial territory, and they bided their time hoping for an opportunity to destroy them. The chance came in the mid-8th century when the Bulgars' internal civil strife coincided with the fall of the Arab Umayyad imperial dynasty, which freed Anatolian military forces for use against the divided Bulgar state. Between 756 and 775 Emperor Constantine V, 741 to 75 conducted a series of nine wars against the bulgars in which he oftentimes came close to obliterating their forces yet despite consistent victories in the field constantine failed to destroy the bulgar state it survived because 
protected on the south by the ramparts of the Balkan Mountains, its core northern territories remained unconquered. The rise of the Arab Abbasid Caliphate in the east generally kept Constantine's successors preoccupied throughout the remaining quarter of the 8th century, but warfare in the Balkans did not completely cease. Emperor Constantine VI, 780-97, and his mother Empress Irene, 797-802, conducted Balkan campaigns whenever possible, targeting small Slav tribal groups, whom the Byzantines collectively called Sklavini, in hopes of winning easy military victories for propaganda purposes in the capital. Their operations focused on regions well away from Bulgar interest, such as Thessaly, Attica, the Peloponnese, and Thessaloniki, and intentionally avoided any serious engagement with the Bulgars. One of Constantine's and Irene's campaigns did, however, initiate the successful Byzantine recovery of the Greek south. In 782 and 783 the eunuch general Stavrakios attacked the Slavs near Thessaloniki, marched southward through Thessaly, winning victories against Slav opponents along the way, and raided into the Slav-held Peloponnese. The campaign won few concrete gains, but the imperial triumph accorded Stavrakios in the capital presage the emphasis that the authorities soon placed on regaining the Greek southern Balkans. Further emphasis came with the creation of a new Balkan theme, Macedonia carved out of the already existing Thracian and Helladic themes and centered on western Thrace, with its commander, Strategos, stationed at Adrianople. The recovery of Greece began in earnest with Emperor Nikephoros I, 802-11. Around 805 imperial forces operating out of Corinth extended Byzantine authority over the northern Peloponnese. Patras was recovered and rebuilt, and a new theme was created to encompass the regained territory. Soon afterward the Slavs in the Peloponnese unsuccessfully revolted against the growing Byzantine presence. In response, Nikephoros transferred Greek-speaking populations from other regions of the empire to the Peloponnese and central Greece, forcibly settling them in Slav-inhabited areas. To ensure the successful Hellenization of the Slavs living in Greece, an Orthodox church organization using the Greek language exclusively was imposed throughout the region. It conducted an intensive campaign of Slav religious conversion. Aided by the church, the newly arrived Greek-speaking colonists inexorably absorbed and dominated the neighboring resident Slavs. In less than a century after Nikephoros's efforts, Greece once again predominantly was Greek.